Hello YouTube. So I ended up staying a little bit later than I was scheduled at um, Domino's. I got a I got a delivery like right about I don't know, maybe five minutes ahead of nine o'clock. And kind of weird. Like it had this thing that I guess has something to do with the Domino's app called pinpoint delivery. Where instead of an address, it had like longitude and latitude. Which I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with that. And thank God in the comments like details section he put in the address which just seems weird to me like why would you use a drop point for a delivery location if you know the address why wouldn't you just put in the address i don't know that stuff seems weird to me but i don't know this, this younger generation they just do things differently um speaking of younger generation doing things differently right after i got out into my car and I was checking messages on my phone to see if Priscilla had messaged me because it's Friday night and generally we get together and do karaoke if I'm awake and not overworked and wander in. Not that we've made any plans to get together this weekend, but kind of sending each other random comments and stuff. Like I told her about the promotion that I was given today, which I haven't told Samantha about because she's too busy making pizzas to talk to her about scheduling issues and also apparently too busy making pizzas to manage the store because she sent me this text message which i saw after i left that said uh i think a screenshot of it i'm gonna put it on my snapchat as uh why teenagers should be put in charge of uh middle-aged adults but yeah at 8 46 mind you i'm scheduled to leave at nine and there was an order that i had coming out but she sent me a text right at 8 46 that said need you to stay off your phone and find something to do Keep hearing about and seeing you on your phone at all times. There's plenty to do. Mind you, she said, find something to do. It's kind of a manager's job to delegate something to do, especially to new employees. And if that something is something that that person doesn't know how to do, train them and teach them how to do it. I'm a lot of things, not a mind reader. There was way more people working in that store than there should have been, which brings up the question, why is she like so busy making pizzas that she can't manage the store while the rest of us are all standing around talking and on our phones because everything's done i mean generally speaking when i've been there i've been doing the dishes because uh you know hey there's always dishes to do i mean the last couple days i've mostly been busy delivering but when i haven't been delivering that's usually what i gravitate to is working on the dishes and there's another guy working tonight um older mexican guy Oh, come on, shift. You know, what's so wild is when it does this thing where it slips between first... Oh, darn, I was gonna... I was hoping I could get it on video. Where it gets in this weird neutral between first and second. Like, I'll be rolling forward, and I can feel the, you know, the RPM's going up. And of course, I don't rev it up, because it's just asking for problems. But the speedometer just drops all the way down to zero when it happens. So... Yeah, this transmission is completely on its last legs, so I need to budget for that. That's going to be my next oh shit expense. Anyway, yeah, I mean, if she has time to be texting me, but can't, like, I'm like, I was in the restaurant. Like, if there's something you want me to do, come ask me to do it. <laughs> anyway, I, I texted her right after I left QT and just said, uh, I'm off. <laughs> so... I don't think she understands how many phones that I have. When she's sending a text message, sending a text message to my iPhone, which I was hardly using at all, other than shoot a few videos here and there. And I think I downloaded a couple of things from Microsoft Cloud from it. But it's not like I'm sitting there staring at the phone. Like I start the download and I set it down and I come back later and pick it up, see if it's done and start the video. I'm like, okay, it's there. Mostly I was looking at Obama Phone 3 because I was trying to upload things to the cloud and kind of figure out how I'm gonna break up the next day's worth of videos into, oh, come on, shift, car. I'm gonna break up the next day's videos into uh, end of vlog chapters. Since 30 minutes-ish seems to be the sweet spot of when I make them about 30 minutes long, like I don't have problems with exporting them in iMovie. For some reason, when I when I get past the 40 minute mark, it just becomes super problematic trying to export them and get them uploaded. But 30 minutes seems to work out pretty well. I've got a segment from the next day of what I need to upload, which I believe is July 12th, where 
And of course, by the time you see this, it'll be old news, but um, in that segment, so nice to be driving on this freeway, by the way, and changing lanes, going with the flow of traffic, so I'm not an obstacle and a, and a road hazard. Because yeah, right now, I mean, I know the speed limit is 55, but I'm doing, and I'm not doing a whole lot over it, to be honest, I'm doing about 62, but, but yeah, it's really nerve-wracking getting over to this lane when everybody's doing, you know, between 60 and 70, and I've got to maintain 52 so I don't get a negative driver score. And I have no idea what speed I'm supposed to be doing here. I mean, is it still 55? I don't know. There's a spot where it says that the ramp is 40, which seems asinine for this. It probably refers to the ramp to the right. And those yellow signs technically aren't speed limit signs anyway. I've been warned by Jesus that she, that Samantha doesn't like the way to talk to her. So, feels like feels like you're talking down to her. I'm like, well, talking to her the way I would talk to most 19 year olds, I'm 53. So, that's how she sees it, you know, is what it is. I don't feel like I've disrespected her as a manager in any way, but I was pretty irritated when the tots all fell to shit. And I'm like, yeah, well, I was, I was given vague directions. I wasn't shown what to do. I said, I, I really need to see what to do. I mean, if I wanted to be a real dick about it, I suppose I could always text her boss, because that's the guy that hired me. Frank. I feel like I got pretty good rapport with Frank. Although I know Domino's really likes to look at things by metrics. I think our metrics for the store are really good. What I under, you know, what I understand and what I've been overhearing people talk about. But certainly one thing I've learned in, in food management and other management is if, if the metrics are good because she's doing everything herself, that's not so good. Like the manager's primary job is to delicate lead, lead and train and that text message was like what kind of leadership is that like if she's got something to say to me I'm in the store come say it to me or or I'm not in the store and I'm out delivering and at which point like hello shouldn't be texting and driving and speaking of texting while working she'll be texting and shit while she's making pizzas and I'm pretty sure that's a health code violation I mean anytime you touch something that's not food or food preparation service you're supposed to go wash and sanitize your hands, including but not limited to your cell phone. So, and I, I'm not the kind of guy, I don't want to throw her in the to Frank like that, but yeah, probably you need to put that away while you're making pizzas because that's a health code violation. I understand at 19, you're like married to your phone and you can text incredibly fast because that's what you kids do, but something you shouldn't be touching while you're preparing food. I mean, yeah, I'm messing with mine a little bit, but for the most part, like I've walked in, there's nothing immediately that I'm aware of that I need to do. It's not like I didn't do anything while I was, you know, waiting for additional orders. I mean, I did the ovens for a little bit, but if too many people crowd in that area trying to do ovens simultaneously, it becomes complete chaos. One day I was working, I messed an order up, and that's because I was a little unclear as to like what order the tickets went in, because as I've explained previously, to me the way they're moving the workflow and the way they're moving the tickets is completely backwards. And I've explained why it seems backwards. She's like, well, it's because you read left to right. Not when I read Hebrew. I mean, if the workflow of the pizza is sliding from the left and moving to the right, should the tickets not also be sliding from the left and moving to the right along with the pizzas? That's how it's always worked at every other pizza place I've ever worked at, including but not limited to other Domino's pizza locations. So. By the way, I'm headed to Rob's. Because, uh, although the air is feeling really great now, it's because I was driving on the freeway. When I drive like normal speeds on the freeway, this car is fine. I don't need a radiator fan on the freeway. It's just got air passing through the car at freeway speeds. Just driving, it's moving air faster than a fan will. But yeah, the forecast for tomorrow, I think, is a high temperature of 114 degrees or maybe 115 degrees. And she's got me working from three to six. It's just it's like right in the middle of peak heat. And uh, yeah, this car, this car ain't going to get it done. Most rock fixes the fan. 
I did text Rob back, but that was like right before I texted Samantha back after I left QT. And hey, good news at QT, they finally got the Sweet Black Tea back in stock. The QT brand, Sweet Black Tea. I love that stuff. Hands down, my favorite prepackaged tea type beverage. And just lately, every QT I've been going to has had it out of stock. I actually asked one of the cashiers at that store over there on Thomas. It's like, hey, is, is that still? Because they had all the other flavors all neatly lined up in a row, and then it was another product at the end of them, another brand of tea. I was like, hey, is that, is that still a thing? Has it been discontinued? They're like, no, just for some reason, we just I haven't been getting it. It's on order. I'm like, well, okay. So, of course, I go in there and I you know, buy four bottles at once. You know, and sometimes more, so it doesn't help them stay in stock. Rolling up on Rob's shop. Hopefully he actually makes it in. If I can't make it tomorrow because my car's broken down, it's not gonna really. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to let Samantha down, but <laughs> that text message thing is just. I don't, I don't know whether to be annoyed or just I'm I'm more just who does that? You know, I mean, because I wasn't even looking at my iPhone. I was looking at Obama phone three. So I didn't even see those text messages until after I left the store. But again, she goes, uh, there's plenty to do. That's not very specific. That's not how you give specific directions to delegate something to do. There's plenty to do. What is exactly is the plenty? Cause like, I made a fresh thing of mop water. I mopped the back room and the far back room. I stocked and faced the Coke cooler there's somebody else doing dishes. Like, what the fuck else am I supposed to do? And sometimes when she sees me going in on my phone, I'm taking Obama phone five and putting it on the charger in there, because as I've stated before, it's battery life is so bad. And the Domino's Pizza app is so resource hungry on that phone that it sucks the battery right dead. So if I'm not walking back there and plugging in and checking it to make sure that it's getting juice and then shutting down the screen, it won't make it through the shift. Anyway, wrap this up and, uh, and then walk over to the bus stop and figure that out. Part of me really wants to take a Waymo, but I still feel like I need to be more frugal with my money than that. Hello again, YouTube. It is still Friday night. August 4th, I believe. Yeah, August 4th, 2023, 9.58 p.m. And I've been sitting here at this bus stop for, for a while. <laughs> Probably about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. I don't know. I forget what time it was when I dropped the car off, but... Check the Valley Metro app, which at this point is only functioning on Obama Phone 5. And it's developed this new weird glitch. It makes it quite annoying to use, and I don't ever remember having this problem before. But So there's the bus stop where I'm at, and I click on that. I can scroll up, and it shows that the next bus stop in here is the, the 32 and then the 30, and then the 32. Um, so the the 30 was running late, it just came and went. And I was thinking about taking it, I was trying to figure out what would work out better. Taking it and going either to Mill and walking over to Third and catching the rail, or maybe taking it all the way to Rural and then walking across to the train station and catching catching the rail from there and then taking that up to 44th street taking the 44 home kind of looking to see which would work out better which of course involves scrolling scrolling on the route 30 there it goes zooming in nice to see what time it's going to land at mill and what time it's going to land at rural well that one's already came and went and i just went ahead and waved them on I never was able to really figure out the answer, but so anyway, here's the thing, and it says live vehicle tracking will begin when the trip starts. The trip doesn't start until 10, and it's before 10, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's not running. It just means that this trip hasn't started yet. So anyway, I'm scrolling up, and notice it when I click on that, it doesn't go immediately to the stop I'm at. By the way, Price and University there, that's the destination of this bus, but it doesn't automatically go to the stop where I'm at which is 40th Street and University, but it goes to the beginning of the line, which is 24th Street and Baseline. 
So scrolling up, I gotta go all the way to here, University and 40th Street, University Drive, 40th Street, that's where I'm at. And as I continue to scroll up, oh, of course, now it's not doing it. So there's Mill, Mill 1030, and then we're all 1033. Anyway, it's not doing it now. Now that I'm shooting video of it, the, the problem has mysteriously gone away. But what it was doing is I would scroll, and then as I would get close to where I was on the list, where I'm trying to see what, what time it's going to arrive, where I would need to transfer to another route, it would refresh, and then immediately back, be back at the beginning of the list. I don't know why it just suddenly isn't doing that. So weird. Because when I was trying to check the bus schedule, I just absolutely couldn't figure it out because it kept refreshing quicker than I could figure out what time I was getting to a destination. So I figured I'd give Waymo another try since my iPhone screen, it's really intermittent the way it acts up. Like the other day I was here damn near in tears because I was worried I was going to be late to work over at MLS and it looked like I was going to be stuck, you know, 30, 40 minutes at this corner waiting for a route. 32 that was running late to get north up to the light rail station which is right there by where the SkyTrain station is. Of course once I got SkyTrain getting over to the rental car center is easy. It's just about 15, 18 minutes something like that but that's easy and those trains come every like four or five minutes. But this bus, <laughs> the buses at this stop don't come very often. Yeah it was running late so I was super frustrated. I'm like well I guess I'll just try and take a Waymo. The screen was acting so wonky at that time I couldn't zoom in on the map to try to drop a pin. Because as I would try to zoom in on the map, it would sense the touches that aren't supposed to be there, and it would zoom way out to the point where I was looking at the entire city. So much for trying to zoom in on a building. I tried to zoom in a little bit, and then it automatically zooms out to the point where it's like, if I'd have done that a few, three more times, I'd have been looking at the whole state of Arizona on the map. Not, not helpful. And that's not because of the software. That's because my screen is whacked. And of course, when I dropped it and cracked it, that pretty much was the warranty. There's no point in me even trying to get out and replace it. And granted, I mean, I'm, he sold me a defective screen. And I'm sure his part supplier will probably warranty that. But again, like, he's not going to be able to get his money back if the screen's all cracked across the bottom. And I did that. So, whatever. I just have to deal with it until I can afford to get it replaced. And at this point, I'm a little bit frustrated. I'm going to try to find a different shop this next time around. So, I went on the Waymo app to see what it would cost to get from here over to Wander Inn. I'm assuming Priscilla's there. She hasn't texted me in quite a while. And I think she knows I'm generally too busy when I'm at Domino's to, to text. I'm either driving or I'm washing dishes. Although Samantha's convinced I'm just always on my phone. Oh, and I got a continuation in that, that saga. After I got done checking the Valley Metro app and checking Waymo, I saw she had texted me back and she's like, that was like an hour ago. And I'm like, yeah, well, I didn't see it until after I left QT, which was after I left Domino's. And she just responded to that with a thumbs up. So I don't know. I can't, I can't explain that From one. From a food service perspective, I'm a little bothered that she's doing anything on her smartphone while she's making pizzas. That's not a food preparation utensil. Put that shit away. Or delegate somebody else to be making pizzas and sit down at your desk and do some texting. But if you've got somebody in the building that you think should be doing some side work, by all means, delegate him some side work instead of a fucking text message that says there's plenty to do but obviously I didn't see what that plenty was to do when I was working on mopping the back room I had a couple people tell me that it was pointless for me to be mopping the back room that early sorry I ran ran a fresh mop bucket I'm looking for something to do but she's gonna get some on the phone all the time whatever and the funny thing is I don't think she even understands I have multiple phones and the phone I was looking at is just a phone that has no phone service that I'm connected to my Cox hotspot. Hey, there goes Route 32. Head to South Mountain Community College. Yeah, I mean, she thinks she understands that that's a completely different phone that doesn't receive any messages whatsoever. And that's just a glorified camcorder with a cloud app that I upload videos for the cloud with. And she mentioned not only that that's what she's saying, but that other people are telling her that. Well. That's hearsay. Why are you responding to hearsay? You believe everything you're told? 
I remember when I was 19 in Palo Alto. I needed to text her, but not right now while I'm waiting for the damn bus, but I do need to text her and ask her if she's made next week's schedule or not. I know Rob wants me down at MLS, wants me on the on the evening shift as soon as possible. She didn't have the schedule posted today, and I haven't been at Domino's enough to really, and it did, for that matter, neither is Samantha, for anybody to really know when the schedule is posted. It takes effect Monday, but when does it get posted? I don't know. It's moments like this, I really miss the stability of Amazon, how just everything was on the A to Z app, and I have a regularly scheduled shift, and I could scroll ahead for months and see what my schedule is, and, and if there were any variations in it, you know, because of the holidays that are planned months in advance. It's not, not what's going on. Now, granted, I haven't told her about a change in my availability because I didn't really know about that in today. And I was hoping at some point to let her know that was going to be my schedule five consecutive days a week. So what two consecutive days would she want me to be available during those hours? And, you know, those could become my days off. But apparently she's more worried I might be using my cell phone when she's failing to tell me what other side work needs done. Hopefully the bus will show up soon. I saw something on the Waymo I've never seen before. It wanted to charge me like $21 to go from here to Wander In, which is way more than I'm willing to pay for a ride from here to Wander In right now. That's just, you know, it's Waymo that I want to pay for Waymo. The real kicker is I saw something that I've never seen on the Waymo app before, and that was a little line above the price that said the busier than usual, so prices are on. Oh. See, robots are going to charge like uh, Lyft and Uber does. Oh, cool. I'll, uh, that's fine. I'll wait for the bus. All right. The Valley Metro app is doing that thing that I was describing before. And apparently it only happens if it's uh, a bus that's being actively tracked. So there's the Route 32. It's on its way to me. And it's running, I think, about six minutes late or something. And there it's. At, you can see it's at by the red text it's at 40th street in st catherine right now and as i scroll up to see what time it's going to get here it, it refresh see the little spinny thing and it refreshes and then it pushes it right back up so there's university and 40th and oh, oh it just pushes it back up university and 40th when's it going to get up to 44th i don't know it keeps refreshing and pushing it back up yeah that's an interesting bug Thank you. So I'm having one of those holy crap, I hate Valley Metro kind of moments. So it's 10.24 p.m. And I was, uh, that bus is running maybe about two minutes late. So the problem isn't that bus running a little bit late. The problem is just asinine scheduling. Um, yeah, 10.24, trying to transfer to continue moving northbound. Like I'm coming north on 44th Street and I'm trying to continue traveling north on 44th Street. It's 1024 and the bus left that bus stop over there directly across the street where I go to continue going northbound on 44th Street. It left there at 1020 so I missed it by four minutes. Even by the schedule I would have missed it by two minutes. I don't, I don't understand why the buses are so poorly scheduled here. It just absolutely blows my mind. Uh, the next one isn't until 10.59. Or is it 10... Is it 10.49? I think it's 10.49. I should check that just to be certain. You know, this whole time I've been doing the Valley Metro app on Obama Phone 5, and this entire time, it's been on my iPhone. I mean, I can't do it on my iPhone because I'm recording on my iPhone right now, but I could have earlier. And that weird refreshing bug, I don't know if it's an Android thing or if it's uh, this app just doesn't work well on a UMX because UMXs are awful. But, um, but yeah, I didn't do that on my iPhone. 
so yeah 1049 so a good solid 25 minutes and I'm not sure the temperature right now but it is still still plenty hot out here actually Obama phone 3 has a I'm not sure if it's making progress or not. I've got it. I've got it connected to the hotspot. It gets. It just gets ridiculously slow when I'm trying to upload large files. And it could be a lot of data. And it's just not like it's but all my other stuff seems to be working fairly quickly for it. Um, the weather widget's saying 102 degrees. Yeah, it still feels plenty hot. Hmm, I can smell somebody smoking fentanyl. That's lovely. That guy get two to that because he's waiting to get the light. Somebody over there yelling at somebody over the phone. That's always classic. And my iPhone refusing to focus at night. <laughs> it's been so long since I've shot video on this thing at night that I kind of forgot that was a problem. Oh, and of course, I'm trying to get over to the SkyTrain station, and I'm on the wrong side of Washington for that. La, la, la. That's all right. I enjoy jaywalking Washington. Oh, she's happy. What a sweetheart. She sounds so pleasant. You know, the crappy thing is all the physical amenities are here. All the physical amenities are here to have a really good transit center. <laughs> and everything's just segregated by class. And, and these cement benches are all obstructed by these ugly metal barriers to stop the bones from lying down on them. It's, uh, Yeah, it's kind of a sad state of affairs here in Phoenix. I think I'm just gonna head home. I was thinking about going to wander in, but it's been a long day. And I've been hot most of the day. And I think I just wanna lay down on my bed and crank down the air conditioning. He's gonna tell me I can't come in here because I'm going to the airport. Oh, dude, I work in the rental car center. <laughs> As I'm walking in, I'm done with my shirt. <sighs> wow, I just noticed the sign says please display employee badge. And the whole thing is this is supposed to be. A public amenity for everybody in the city of Phoenix, paid for by Phoenix taxpayer dollars. And it is the connection to the Route 44. Route. Now the uh, Route 32 doesn't go down here, but yeah, there's the next 44 right there see the flashing so if I'm lucky they'll let me get on it and I can just chill on the bus and if not I'll just chill in the air conditioning inside the SkyTrain station but yeah everything's separated by class here in Phoenix and bus riders are dirty and nasty and they don't want them in this nice air conditioned facility while they're waiting for their buses they'd rather have them out sweating and 104 to 115 degree heat.
this thing needs to be focused for the cam. It's kind of sad because the airplane is really cool looking if I could get it to come into focus. Hey, there it is. Yeah, there's a cone in front of that entrance. All the entrances on the other side of the building, on the east side of this building, are like that. The only one that's still open is that one to the bus, and then this one here, which has got the sign kind of as an obstacle. Love this art installation. Although it doesn't have as many lights as it used to. It used to have blue lights all the way across, now it just has a couple in the middle. The whole offset of the, uh, and the irregularity of the, the panels, that's intentional. Uh, and of course, all the litter bugs is kind of why they're trying to keep people out of this really nice facility. It's supposed to be a nice transit facility, but you know, we've got security in place to keep the riffraff use it for transportation out. You see the driver over there. I'm going to stop this video so I don't run out of space on my phone. But I think she's sitting over there by the pillar probably smoking. Alright, so it's August 4th, 10.34 p.m. That was the driver sitting by the pillar. I asked her showed her my bus pass and said, is it uh, cool if I just go in the bus and sit in the air? So she leaves in about 10 minutes. And she's like, yeah, it's fine. I still think this is great. We got like a whole articulated bus. I don't know how many passengers these hold, but they're huge. And there's the, there's the flexible part in the center. And uh, I don't understand why they run these buses, which are so much more expensive to run than something smaller and take up so much space on the road for routes that just don't have the ridership to justify it. It would be so more functional if they use like mini buses, like extended, extended vans, but had the route running every 15 minutes. Now granted, manpower was more expensive than vehicles, but still, I, I, I can only imagine what the fuel cost is just to move a vehicle this large. And you know, what the wear and tear uh, is on this vehicle compared to just a, an extended van or, a, uh, or something like that. That big white microbus thing that got abandoned for so long on 46th Street over by my place and then eventually got impounded. <laughs> Just got some random message on Reddit about a thick black girl and ebony amateurs. I wonder if that's just somebody doing pork spam or if it's actually somebody I was talking about on there. I uh, gotta go look. All right, it's 10:55 and I changed my mind. Just got off to 44 and decided to get off at McDowell. I just heard the speaker say, "Next stop." Down road, transferred to Route 17. I was like, I don't want to go home yet. I mean, I'm tired, and I probably should. But I haven't got to sing karaoke all week, and I'm, I'm just itching to sing. I am really itching. Interesting place to take a nap. Yeah, I mentioned the sing. Don't know what I'll sing. I got a handful of songs running through my head. That's one thing I absolutely love about the uh, job at the rental car center. I get to listen to such a wide variety of music roaming around. Every car I get into at this point, one of the first things that I do, I mean, obviously buckling my seatbelt if I'm moving it more than just a few feet, but one of the first things I do is try to get some music playing. I uh, used to immediately gravitate to FM radio, but as I'm realizing most of the vehicles have XM, uh, I'm headed to that because there's such an insanely large variety of different stuff on XM. And I'm actually starting to memorize like some of the stations that I really like. And I'll just hear some of the most random stuff. Although, every now and then, 
I still manage to end up on AM. And I'm frequently ending up on FM. It, it's not unusual to click XM and then whenever it goes to the preview station on channel one instead of the hit station on channel one, then that tells me it doesn't have an active subscription on it. Which I think it's really weird how some Hertz rental cars have active subscriptions and some don't. I don't recall that ever being something that was explained in a rental contract, but then as I mentioned earlier today, I've never rented from Hertz. And I wonder how that works. If you personally have a subscription to Sirius XM, Asked my mother about that. She had a subscription to Sirius XM for a long time. I've never subscribed to it. I've had a, uh, and I've mentioned this before, I've had a Polk Audio Home Component XM tuner for a long time, and it's a little dated, and I question if it receives everything that exists on the platform since Sirius and XM have merged. It's from a time when Sirius and XM were two separate competing services. But yeah, I used to only ever use that when I would hear the advertisements. Or mostly I'd see them when I was doing karaoke over at Gilligan's and over at Castaways. I'd see the ads saying, do you have an XM radio? Give it a try. Just because a lot of people buy used cars, they get cars with XM radios built into the stock car stereo, but they don't get a subscription with it. And they would do this on the regular to try to give people a free sample to make them want it. Because if you don't know what it has to offer, why would you mess with it, right? Why would you pay for a subscription to find out? Most people are just like, yeah, whatever, not interested. But once you've tried it, it's uh, it's kind of addictive. Part of me is tempted to, to pay for it, but then I was thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, why would I piss away money on that? Especially as tight as I am on funds right now. When I get to listen to it on more cars than not for free. To hear so many different songs and i just stop when i hit something i like with all the variety of music i listen to i mean that could be any genre of music like there's two different stations that identify as yacht rock which is a term i never heard until late last year but i always hear good stuff on that i mean shit i heard christopher cross I like the wind today which I, I love that song and one of the reasons i really dig that song is michael mcdonald like co-wrote it and produced it and does the backing vocals so hearing christopher cross and michael mcdonald harmonized just you know that puts me in a happy spot but yeah, a lot of other stuff I listen to today. And I mean, everything from rock to heavy rock to classic rock to country to classic country. I mean, Willie's Roadhouse. I forget what station number it is. It's somewhere in the 60s or maybe 70s. There's literally hundreds of stations on Sirius XM. And that particular station just plays some of the most, like, just forgotten classic country. And I hear, I hear stuff from artists that I like that I've never gotten deep enough into their catalogs to, to know those songs. And and I've been taking pictures of stuff that comes up that I get into on my, uh, on my camera just so I can look it up later. 